much, Madam Moderator, my fellow citizens, residents, and well-wishers. I am grateful for this opportunity to be communicating with you again tonight across multiple media and platforms. It is an honor to execute my duty as national leader and prime minister of St. Kitts and Nevis, and in particular to take time to listen to you directly and respond to your questions and concerns. This is yet another feature of our good governance agenda. It is evidence of our people's centered approach to governance and my administration's commitment to accountability. Indeed, this is yet another medium through which citizens and residents get the opportunity to engage the office of the Prime Minister, and I count it a privilege to facilitate this event. Tonight, I believe it is important for us to continue our ongoing discussions on the way forward living and ultimately thriving in this challenging COVID-19 era. We are well aware that the COVID-19 pandemic has had extreme negative impacts on lives and livelihoods across the world. As a responsible government, we have sought to mitigate these negative impacts in St. Kitts and Nevis. While my government has always insisted on a life-first approach and has been guided throughout this pandemic by the advice of our health professionals and our national task force, we have recognized and shown our commitment to ensuring that our citizens and residents not only have life, but that they have the best quality of life possible. For this reason, we have launched a number of initiatives in the recent months to provide relief and to keep our people safe. The Team Unity Administration has been allocating available resources and employing varied measures to reduce economic hardships experienced by citizens and residents during this period of challenge. I recently announced an historic second stimulus package containing several comprehensive, far-reaching and targeted initiatives to stimulate economic activity and provide a better quality of life for our people. In addition, we continue to provide significant support to the most vulnerable in our society through our comprehensive social assistance programs. Our Poverty Alleviation Program, PAP, has brought and continues to bring much needed relief to many of our citizens and residents. Nevertheless, we have added other initiatives to supplement the PAP. Over the period January to July, we have assisted over 5,000 families under the PAP for a total expenditure of $18.7 million. My government has been there helping the poor and the vulnerable through these challenging times. I will now provide some updates on the rollout of some elements of our stimulus package, which believe provide much needed relief to our citizens and residents. Turning to the popular income support program, a total of 3,663 applications have been received by the Ministry of Finance as of the 16th August 2021. A total of 1,528 applications have already been approved of which instructions were sent to the Treasury to pay 1,005 applicants. Arrangements are being made to have another 250 payments processed shortly. With respect to our fuel subsidy program, a total 
of 101 applications have been received by the Ministry as of the 16th August 2021. A total of 83 applications have been approved and 74 permits have been made to date. With respect to the disability support, a total of 118 applications have been approved, of which 112 have been paid to date. Arrangements are being made to have payments process for the remaining six applicants. My government will ensure that to the extent we can, no one, I repeat, no one is being left behind. With respect to support for the food truck vendors, a total of four applications have been received and approved by the Ministry of Finance. The payment details were submitted to the Treasury for processing. Meantime, my government has committed well over $100,000 to create a safe and secure area for the truck vendors to ply their trade at North Independence Square Street. We will ensure that everyone doing business there complies with the COVID-19 protocols. Turning to the matter of public safety, Thursday last week, was a very good day for the people of St. Kitts and Nevis in our ongoing fight against COVID-19. We move yet another step closer to the recovery of our economy and near normalcy in our society. We received the first tranche of 11,700 doses of the well-known Pfizer vaccine, a timely contribution from President Joseph Biden and his administration. This contribution was delivered as a direct result of our high-level diplomacy pursued by CARICOM heads of government, in particular, Prime Minister Keith Rowley of Trinidad, Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt of Dominica, and yours truly, the Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis. As Prime Minister, I am very happy that we now have the Pfizer vaccine. It brings more choices to our people, something we had long hoped for. Our procuring these doses of this Pfizer vaccine is a major success given the very limited availability and accessibility of vaccines in the developing world. The Pfizer vaccine has also been used to vaccinate persons 12 years and over. <coughs> this is a tremendous benefit since our children can now have their own protection rather than relying on vaccinated adults for their protection. Our schools can safely reopen in September with reduced risk to our children who can now get vaccinated if they are 12 years old and 12 years and older. We want all our children to be safe, to be protected and to be properly educated. My administration is committed to delivering a stronger, safer future and to do so, we must protect our young people even as we continue to secure the well-being of every other demographic. It is still true that vaccination is a critical tool in the fight against COVID-19 and its extensive devastating ripple effects. It is critical to our opening up of our economy safely and in particular our people being able to get back to work with reduced risk. Across the world, the best scientific evidence indicates that vaccination offers a critical layer of protection to individuals and this provides the best possible outcomes to communities and countries. Turning to the hurricane season, while we discuss the issue of safety of our citizens and residents, I must remind our people that the Atlantic hurricane season 
runs from the 1st June to the 30th of November. This is a period when we face threats from tropical waves, tropical storms and hurricanes. We are now in the third month of the season and perhaps fast approaching the peak of the season. Let us take the necessary steps to prepare ourselves as best we can for any eventuality associated with the threats of these weather systems. The final matter I wish to address is the award of Medal of Honours. I want to express words of commendation and honour to some very special people in our nation who earlier today received the very prestigious awards at Government House. Earlier today, the work, dedication and efforts of these individuals were publicly acknowledged and appreciated. To these honorees I say, thank you for what you have done and continue to do to make our communities stronger and our federation better. Seven of the eight outstanding nationals were invested with the 2020 Medal of Honor by His Excellency the Governor General. Dr. Linton Leibard will receive his medal at a separate ceremony to be held in Nevis. The Medal of Honor is one of the two highest civilian honors that the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis bestows on its sons and daughters. We present these medals to honor those who go above and beyond their call of duty. This medal is an acknowledgement that the recipient truly has put country before self. Today's recipients have more than demonstrated this virtue and the deserve of this honor and of our gratitude. Please let us all recognize our eight deserving recipients. Mrs. Pearlene Teresa Musendem. Her field was education. Mr. Joseph Emmanuel Benders, her arts in particular, steel band music. Dr. Linton Leibard, Medicine, Mrs. Patricia, Mary Nurse Clark, Community Service, in particular, Care for the Elderly and Those with Disabilities, Mrs. Pamela Elaine Brooks, for Nursing Duties, Mr. Charles Delvin McMaster, was honored for his work in Community Service, Mr. Brian Dwyer, Dyer, for National Service in Crisis, and Dr. Judy Nisbet for National Service in Crisis. Today we acknowledge our service, but also we acknowledge their humility. Here with me tonight are dedicated professionals who will further our discussions and assist me in providing reliable information to our people. I want to thank the panelists for their sacrifice and hard work. And I want to thank them for dedicating their time to serving our beloved citizens and residents. The panelists here tonight are no strangers to our nation. They are not strangers to the viewers and listeners of Leadership Matters. Indeed, each of them has demonstrated commendable leadership attributes over the past 18 months. Allow me to introduce the panelists, our Medical Chief of Staff, Dr. Cameron Wilkinson, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Mr. Vincent Hodge, and Superintendent of Police, Mr. Cromwell Henry. I hope that you will enjoy tonight's Leadership Matters and find it to be very informative. May God continue to bless and prosper our people and country, and may he continue to keep us all safe. I thank you for tuning in.